with a, a new staff member at Wesley, um, one of the things um, that I noticed, I guess compared to other schools I've been at, is um, just how different the, um, the clock works here. Um, so someone just came in and they observed our teachers. Um, one, it would seem like they showed up late and they left early. But one of the, the reasons for that is that, um, yeah, the team's participate in like collaborative planning. So we use predominantly most of our team meetings for planning because we teach collaboratively and we share 100 children. It can be quite interesting planning and you can teach to your strengths and it actually is really good for your well-being because it does lessen the load for a lot of people. So they jump in together, they share, they talk through it um, and what that gives them is more time. When you have more time, you have more space to think, um, and then you've kind of seen that, yeah, I guess, that positive impact for teachers. With student wellbeing, I think there's the stress around maybe access to learning. Our learning site is really the go-to. It's like our online classroom. If they're away, they can go on there and access it. Even if they've been at school, they can access the ubiquitous and visible learning anytime. And it's, a lot of it is rewindable, so they can go back and do it at a later stage as well. Um, so when I wasn't at school, I got to keep learning. I got to finish my writing and Minecraft um, activities. Or sometimes we can just look on the um, Kia um, slide and just see what they're up to and like do what they're doing. It's a really great tool for reminderable learning, so if you've got a child that comes and they were away or they've missed something, you can get them to go and have a look back at what they've done, see some real life examples from the students in their class, and it's a really good tool to help them. So sometimes when I'm at home or when I'm sick, um, I like look on the class dojo where um, some of the teachers, they um, post and show the, what they've been doing at school. It just like makes me happy because I like to see what everyone's doing. So I guess with my role, um, I don't get to in interact with that every day in the classroom, um, but in terms of like a school-wide strategy, one of the ways that plays out is um, through our Talanoa, which you know traditionally would be like a student-led conference or parent-teacher conference. Um, so at those Talanoa, parents and students are allowed to speak in their first language, their home language, and teachers are there as like a support to the student as opposed to reporting to parents. So the thing that I like like doing at the school is um, when we get to use our Chromebooks, it's like fun because then we learn how to use more, um, them more and I also like the cultural groups because um, we get to dance um, in other cultures and it makes us like more interested in learning other people's cultures. When we put students at the centre, our goal um, in terms of like a long term strategy is that they don't have to leave any of themselves at the gate. So the way that they let um, us express who we are, like with our culture groups, we get to um, dance like with um, two songs that are from our culture too, and that's kind of like something that's important to me. The way that that's encapsulated in, in, in education speak is through like culturally sustaining practices. And so for a kid, any kid, regardless of their background, to be able to show up um, and for their learning, the interactions with adults here, um, the interaction with the New Zealand curriculum to maintain or enhance, at a minimum maintain them on it, at a, at, a, at a maximum level enhance it, so that who they are at home or who they choose to be at home versus who they choose to be at school, like that gap's very small. Most, like sometimes in maths and um, online maths, um, they make um, questions like, and they kind of like, sometimes it's about like our culture and it makes us like, oh, it makes me and like, you know, it makes me happy that to see that like our culture is also getting involved in our learning. So in terms of directly impacting final wellbeing, um, that's tricky for a school, you know, in terms of the students. But again, I guess having that cultural lens, something that we strive to do here is to align, for example, the school's aspirations. So, you know, if you look at our charter, our strategic stuff, we look at our website, but the, the, on, the ongoing work that's happening is around aligning school aspirations, teacher aspirations with Fano aspirations and so yeah there's those kind of opportunities so my family or my parents um they feel i think they feel like really proud to see like the lots of stuff that we were doing so my family feel like surprised because like they were saying like back in their days they weren't doing stuff like us like technology and it's good to see like our generation like have like another chance to like make um to make learning more fun for me, like it's yeah, it's that it's that idea um, of yeah, just putting people first and recognizing that they they are important. But I think one thing 
um, I did I one, one thing I read actually not that long ago before starting here was this idea of like toxic well-being where it's talked about but nothing ever happens about it and I think yeah that's anything like but toxic here like it's very positive um, and the only thing I can say is like it's not just talked about you know by the board or by by Lou our principal um, but yeah it's you can you see it you know happening for people and I just yeah it's just you have to come and see it to like actually believe what I'm saying, yeah.